Okay, I have six o'clock. I'd like to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Thank you all for coming tonight. If we could, could we start off with a roll call attendance vote, please, Ms. Gullich? Mary Marshall? Here. Mr. Hamilton? Here. Mr. Carroll? Here. Ms. Phillip? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. Mr. Carter? Here. Ms. Mondragon? Here. Mr. Gill? Here. Mr. Knight? Here. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. C.T. Foster if he'd be willing to come lead us in our invocation. <coughs> Heavenly Father, just once again, we do come before you in prayer, thanking you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who gave his life for the sins of the world. And we regret it, and now since you are in your glory, position of power and judgment. And we pray over our people, and forgive us for our sins. Now, God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together this new year and work for the city, city of Christ. And if we do so, God, we pray that your spirit is going to do us, guiding us, and directing us. We pray, O oh God, for this country, that it heals, and that we come together as one in unity again. O oh God, we thank you again for all the blessings of life. And now, God, we pray that this need to go forth in the spirit of love and in an all fashion. We ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for those beautiful words. At this time, I'm very excited to invite before you Miss Sarah Grace and Mr. Aiden, two of our local Cub Scouts that we're very honored to have with us tonight. And we're, they're here to help lead us in our pledge. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Could we have a round of applause for these two guys? If we could, I'd like to go ahead and open up a discussion of our minutes. Each of us should have received those in your box as well as your email. I'd entertain a motion uh, to approve those minutes or any questions or concerns anyone might have at this time. With a motion and a second to approve the minutes, could we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Phillips? Mr. Foster? Mr. Carter? Yes. Ms. Mondragon? Yes. Mr. Deal? Yes. And Mr. Knight? Yes. Thank you. At this time, I'd also entertain a motion to accept the financials as presented. Make a motion that we accept the financials. A motion and a second to accept the financials. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Mr. Carter? Yes. Ms. Mondragon? Yes. Ms. Gill? Yes. And Mr. Knight? Mr. Knight? Yes. Thank you. Council has granted us the grace to, to shift our schedule a little bit tonight and go ahead and begin with our State of the Union address. I'd like to thank Mr. Barfield and his crew for being here tonight uh, to help stream this to our community. It's so important to me as well as our council that we be accessible and relatable to our public and that you're a part of everything that we're doing. We want you to hear, we want you to know, and we want to hear from you. So thank you for doing that for us tonight. Good evening and welcome to our meeting tonight. It is a tremendous honor to stand before you serving our great city of Crossett as your mayor and to give my first State of the City address. It is likewise a privilege to sit at this table with our team of dedicated and talented city council leaders who play a vital role in our city government. 
Mr. Kerry Carter brings his wealth of knowledge to the council from his career with Georgia Pacific, as well as his recent achievement of receiving an associate's degree in industrial process technology. Mr. Carter is beginning his second term on our council. He also serves on our Leaf and Limb Committee in his role as a council person. Mrs. Kirsten Mondragon is a local business owner who also serves on the Chamber of Commerce Board, Junior Auxiliary of Ashley County Board, and is beginning her first full term on City Council after previously being selected from a talented pool of applicants for appointments to my vacated seat last year. Mrs. Mondragon also serves as ex officio on our Parks and Recreation Commission. Mr. Chris Gill is brand new to our council and has a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. He currently works as an IT manager with Georgia Pacific. He previously served on the Crossett Bay Group Board and the Crossett Eagle Athletic Booster Club. He currently serves as a youth leader at his church. Mr. James Knight, who is joining us uh, virtually this evening, has been a successful business leader in Crossett for over 20 years. He is beginning his fourth term on our council. Mr. Knight is a certified municipal official and has received his continuing education certification every year. He currently serves on the Crossett Economic Development Board in his role as a council person. Mrs. Sheila Phillips has served our council since another highly competitive appointment in 2019 and is also beginning her first full term. Mrs. Phillips holds an associate degree in applied science and is pursuing her Bachelor of Science in teaching and learning. She is a pre-K teacher with the Crossett School System and serves as Vice President of Junior Auxiliary of Ashley County and soon will be serving as President of the nonprofit organization. She also serves as ex officio on this Crossett City Library Board. Our final council member needs no introduction, Mr. C.T. Foster. Mr. Foster is a pillar of our community after a distinguished 40-year career as the band teacher in the Crossett School System. He holds a bachelor degree in music education and has 15 hours towards his master's degree. He has served as a member of this council for 23 years. He has also achieved the status of certified municipal official, a 21 hour commitment, and each year has put in the hours to earn his annually, annual continuing education certification. He has also served on both the sheltered workshop and United Way boards, as well as many others and currently sits on our sewer committee. I'd also like to take just a minute to introduce our supporting team members. To my left, City Attorney Mr. James Hamilton, who has served in this role for more than 20 years. Clerk Treasurer and Certified Public Accountant, Mr. Clark Terrell. While only recently appointed, he has served as Consulting Accountant for the City of Crossett for approximately five years. Our city is fortunate to have his expertise in this increased capacity. Crossett is certainly blessed to have such a remarkable team of elected officials dedicated to the same goal, the prosperity and future of our home, Crossett, Arkansas. We will not always agree on the same path to that goal, but our mutual love of Crossett continues to unite us through all the challenges we face. Next, our city staff. Their expertise and professionalism is unmatched. This team rises to the challenge every day to not only serve our citizens by providing the crucial services we all enjoy and rely upon, but also to share in my vision for our future and implement that to the best of their ability. I ask a lot of our staff, and change is never easy, but this group never wavers in their determination and commitment to rise to each challenge. Together, we consistently work to do more with less and to strive for excellence in all that we do. Each of our entire crew of nearly 100 employees with this collective mindset have already made such a huge difference in our town. To my right is Ms. Lisa Gulledge. Mrs. Gulledge has served as Deputy Clerk Treasurer for over 24 years with the City of Crossett and is instrumental in ensuring we keep our finances in good order and in compliance with all of our responsibilities, and they are many. 
Fire Chief Bo Higginbotham. Where are you, Chief Higginbotham? He has served the city of Crossett for 19 years, the last six as Fire Chief. He serves as the president of the Arkansas State Firefighter Association and chairman of the governor-appointed Fire Protection Service Board. He has been a certified paramedic for 22 years. Chief Higginbotham and his team bravely and consistently not only fight life-threatening fires to protect our lives, our homes, and our businesses, which I have witnessed firsthand, but also provide life-saving emergency care with our top-notch municipal ambulance service. None of us want to see the chief and his team at our home, but we are blessed to have him and his entire crew whenever we need them. Police Chief J.W. Cruz has been with the city of Crossett for nearly 14 years and has served as police chief for six. He holds a Bachelor of Criminal Justice and is currently pursuing his Master's of Social Justice and Criminology. His dedication to community policing has been instrumental in uniting our police force in our community. As evidence of his leadership, we are seeing reduced crime rates and a true partnership between our officers and citizens. In 2020, he spearheaded a local initiative to create a cultural training course for law enforcement based on feedback from a diverse citizen pool. Though much work is left to be done, his willingness to instill change and progress is an inspiration. Our Superintendent of Public Works, Mr. Jeff Harrison, has been with the City of Crossett for 15 years and wears many hats. He leads our streets and sanitation, drainage, code enforcement, and sewer teams, and, it, and he is my right-hand man with improvement projects and special event implementation. And raise your hand, Mr. Harrison. His ingenuity, leadership, and can-do attitude results in so many of the improvements you've seen across Ross Crossett recently, from cleaning up the zoo, to parking lot repairs, to building the New Year's Eve ball. He is a leader and mentor for many of us. Jeff does not like the spotlight, but it is important to note he is instrumental in nearly everything we accomplish in CrossFit. Somehow, despite my propensity to ceaselessly add to his workload, he manages to get it all done. He maintains his certification as a plumbing inspector, HVAC inspector, building inspector, chemical spill inspector, certified floodplain inspector, and as a certified code enforcement officer, though he might argue trying to satisfy my list of demands is his hardest task. Finally, Parks and Rec Recreation Director, Mr. Larry Cantley. Mr. Cantley has served as our Parks and Recreation Director for 17 years. He also serves as a commissioner on the South Arkansas Bay Group State Board. He is passionate about sports and the activities for the children of our community. Mr. Cantley and his team are working to host a variety of local events and their focus is to ensure our parks and recreation facilities and events are enjoyed by young and old alike. Mr. Cantley works closely with the Boys and Girls Club and softball and baseball leagues. He has previously served as the president of the local chapter of Comanis. In addition to all the leaders mentioned, we are blessed to have an ever-improving school system under the direction of our elected officials and, and superintendent, Mr. Gary Williams. And never in more, more important than in these times of a global pandemic, our local hospital, Ashley County Medical Center, is a blessing beyond compare to our community. The professionalism and dedication of both of these entities assures the future of our children and the health and safety of our citizens. And the final pillar of the community I'd like to mention tonight is the most important, you. Without our citizens, none of the things previously mentioned would be possible. In order for our community to not only survive, but to thrive, it requires partnership with our community members. We are here to be of service to you. As long as we all continue to work together with our common focus, the best is yet to come. Together, we are Team CrossFit. With grateful hearts, hard work, and diligence, we will continue to strive for excellence this year 
and the years to come. 2021 will have its share of challenges we must face. Our economic climate locally and nationally is volatile. We face challenges brought by a global pandemic, a partial mill closure of which the initial impacts of reduction in property tax contributions will be felt in 2021 with a forecasted $200,000 decline, as well as a potential decline in our census numbers that would result in reduced turn back revenue and potential DFNA rebate audits any month. To proactively mitigate these risks, our team has passed a balanced budget with an over $450,000 reduction from 2020 and continue for looking ways to cut costs every day. Together with the city council, department heads, and clerk treasurer, we are monitoring the financials with intense focus and are prepared to pivot if our budget cuts and decreased spending do not prove adequate. We are partnering with our state officials to ensure we have the most up-to-date information on impacts to our revenue streams and any knowledge of assistance programs that may become available. COVID-19 remains a huge issue facing our nation. Many of our loved ones are sick and some have lost their lives. Our communities are hurting. Every aspect of our lives have been upended by this disease. We struggle to stay connected, to stay active, to stay healthy, and for our businesses to thrive. We pray that the experts in the medical community are able to eradicate this disease and make the COVID-19 of the present become the COVID-19 of the past. My office remains connected with local and state health officials as we move forward together to reach this goal. We have faced this pandemic head on, educating ourselves, taking safety precautions, advocating for and securing profit share of CARES Act funding, and doing everything in our power to minimize the impacts of this devastating disease. On a more positive note, our sales tax revenues have trended flat in comparison to previous years, which in these times is a tremendous win. In fact, if our sales tax revenues had not been impacted by the DF&A audit rebates you've heard me talk about, we would have seen an increase in sales tax revenue in 2020. These trying financial times have pushed us to stretch every dollar even more and ensure we maximize every taxpayer penny. We are closely monitoring all costs, overtime, and searching for ways to reduce expenses. This ensures we are functioning at the highest of standards to be great stewards of the funds of which we have been entrusted. Every paycheck signed, every bill paid is reviewed by me in an effort to continuously improve. A key component in our resolve to improve our economic climate is the Crossit Economic Development Foundation. I am proud to serve on this board. Executive Director Mike Smith is a tenacious advocate for CrossFit. And together with the Foundation Board, we work tirelessly to recruit new business and industry to our town. Though not every business results in a match, we remain undaunted in this pursuit. Discussions and proposals are being worked with several prospective businesses, and we are hopeful that some will make CrossFit their home in 2021. 2020 success of Synergy Cargo opening in CrossFit has only served to increase our hunger to bring more business and more jobs to our town. Mr. Smith's teammate, Ms. Chair Balford, has risen to the ceaseless challenges from my office to secure more grants for CrossFit in 2021. Together we are chasing grants to help our parks, our youth center, our auditorium, our municipal building, and exploring every grant that becomes available. We are committed to applying for every grant possible to help our community and are hyper aware many of our larger goals will require grant funding. One aspect of grant funding, specifically federal funds, requires a federal compliance audit for municipalities who receive over $750,000 in federal funds in a given year. 
I am proud to say CrossFit will, re will require this compliance audit this year. You may wonder why this makes me proud. Being required to complete this audit is a direct result of our collective team successfully advocating for and receiving a piece of the pie for CrossFit, enabling us to move forward. Despite the tedious work involved, I hope CrossFit requires this audit every year and we continue to receive these large amounts of federal funds to strengthen and improve our community. The mission of economic development is not only to recruit new business and industry to CrossFit, but to support and retain existing business. This is the mission of the Revamp CrossFit Grant, a local grant administered by the CrossFit Economic Development Foundation. This Revamp CrossFit Grant is a $2,500 matching grant made available to businesses within the CrossFit city limits to improve and enhance their storefronts. You may have had me stop by your business recently to drop off an application, or I may be making my way to you soon. It is important to me that every business in CrossFit has this opportunity to consider applying for this local grant. Please don't hesitate to reach out to my office or the CrossFit Economic Development Foundation who is equally passionate about this to find out how you can take advantage of this opportunity. My goal for all of the, it is for all of the available funds to be granted to local businesses every year. So what else do I hope to accomplish in CrossFit in 2021? What is my vision? My vision for 2021 is to strive for excellence and continue to make incremental improvements across our town. So much is on the horizon, and so much can be accomplished together. We are keenly focused on cleaning up CrossFit. Over the last nine months, we've made tremendous strides with this effort. We've nearly finished the enormous task of cleaning up the former zoo property. We've pressure washed the auditorium. We've repaired the broken windows at the municipal building. We've cut back the large overgrowth at the 6th Avenue ballpark and made substantial headway in remediating the alligator grass at Lucas Pond. We've painted rusty light poles and replaced worn or missing street signs. We've painted a beautiful mural and our storm drains. We've cleaned up and polished so much of our town, and we've only just begun. Another key driver in our cleanup efforts is our code enforcement officer. With his help, the city has demolished nine dilapidated properties recently and worked with property owners to have them tear down four more in just the last few months. Eleven more properties are slated to be torn down this year, and we are strategically exploring ways to do more. Our code enforcement officer has spearheaded a plan to bring down several structures visible from one of our most traveled and treasured streets, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. These efforts revitalize not only the aesthetics, but the spirit of our town. Our parks and recreation crews are working on Lucas Pond with litter and alligator grass cleanup, and they're putting together a plan to clean up the island. They are also working with a local church to continue to paint the tennis court fencing when weather permits. The new Scott McCormick Sports Complex sign has been installed, and we expect to have a dedication ceremony in the near future. We hope this will be enjoyed by our sports leagues this year, as well as out-of-town visitors we host during the ball tournaments our leagues are planning to hold. You may have noticed the municipal parking lot improvements we've implemented recently. The lot behind Country Vittles and the city-owned piece behind Baker's Pharmacy. We intend to do work on the, the municipal lot behind Carlin's and the others as well, and circle back to do another segment of the area behind Country Vittles. As funds allow, we plan to continue repairing bite-sized pieces throughout the year as weather and competing priorities permit. Our Welcome to CrossFit sign lighting is also a priority this year. We are working to have the signs hardwired for reliable electrical lighting in the near future. We have submitted a street overlay project to the state for consideration for 2021. This is something mayors across the state do annually to advocate for their municipal roads in need of repair. While completing this request, I discovered 
Main Street is not a candidate for this program because it is a state highway. Because of this, our team is putting together a proposal for consideration for the State Highway Commission to get our Main Street on their five-year plan. There are no guarantees with either of these. The only true guarantee is that we will never receive these much-needed improvements if we don't try. Our East Crossett Wastewater Project is a huge initiative this year. While 2021 is not scheduled to see ground broken, all of the intricate engineering details and project pieces continue to be in constant motion behind the scenes and lay the foundation for the project with a projected completion date of 2023. The dedication of our sewer committee is unwavering as their work continues to move us towards more job opportunities by making our infrastructure more attractive and compatible to the needs of businesses, industry, and our citizens. The broadband internet project is in the final stages and should be available for the end user in the very near future. The ability for all of our community members to have reliable, consistent, high-speed internet cannot be overstated. The port and RV park are healthy and vibrant and are a source of enjoyment for those both near and far. The airport has received several grants enabling vital improvements in 2020 and the manager and commission are striving to continue this trend in 2021. The Water Commission has implemented new digital meters in 2020 and recently rolled out an online payment system. They continue to be focused on infrastructure improvements in the year ahead. The recent addition of an auditorium board is breathing new life into one of our most beautiful properties. They are working together with our city staff to make incremental improvements to this CrossFit gym and find creative ways for our community to enjoy this beautiful building. Our recreation department is extremely active and creative, generating new ways for our community to be enjoyed. The ideas generated from that group, combined with the ingenuity of Mr. Harrison and his crews, will continue to result in fun activities and a better quality of life for us all. I remain committed to my training as a certified municipal official and in keeping close ties with our partners at the Arkansas Municipal League. It is vital CrossFit stays connected and has a voice. Another key component in my role as mayor is to foster meaningful relationships with our county and state officials to ensure we are working together to advocate for CrossFit, Ashley County, and Southeast Arkansas. We are stronger together. I continue to enjoy working with Mayor Weindorf of Hamburg and our County Judge Hudson and believe our partnership will benefit us all. I look forward to fostering and growing the relationships with the other mayors and elected officials across Ashley County, Southeast Arkansas, as well as throughout our state. In closing, I would like to highlight how extremely excited I am about the year ahead. So much is on the horizon and already in motion. Each day I come to work, I focus on ways to make CrossFit better than it was yesterday. And each night I leave work, I think how can I do a better job tomorrow? I am committed to CrossFit and building its future. The more we accomplish, the more I want to accomplish. Despite all obstacles, there is still so much within our grasp. I love CrossFit. And I hope you can see tonight there is so much to be proud of in our town, our home, and our future. Thank you.